So to get on with the series, today I'm pleased to be joined by Simon Wells and we'll be talking about his book Coming Down Fast, which is about Charles Manson. But first of all, Simon, I'd like to ask you the standard Lost Steps question. William Blake was first and last a Londoner. So, what about you? Well, I'm a country boy who was enchanted by London and uh, watching films like Up the Junction and uh, Smashing Time and Blow Up, it was like a bit of a wonderland to me. So, as soon as I could, I got up here and uh, wanted to engage in all of it. And uh, I did a fair bit of travelling around, but um, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I was enchanted by London and uh, the bright lights, I suppose, of just following a bit of a Dick Whittington. And uh, saw it all, so yeah, yeah, I, I love it. But I live back in the countryside now, but um, special place. Well, well, I guess the question that lots of our listeners might be thinking is, well, Charles Manson, Lost Steps is supposedly a programme about London. Yeah. So, what is the connection between Charles Manson and London? It's an extraordinary question that I would have asked myself if I, I looked at this book a few years ago, because I associate Charles Manson with... California, with the whole sort of American hippie scene, I mean, where does London come into that? But during my researches for the book, I came aware that uh, there was many strands leading off Manson, which came from London, one of which was this very unusual religion called the Process Church of the Final Judgment, which was a, a splinter of Scientology. And two of the early adepts of Scientology uh, actually formed a, a splinter group, which they called the Process Church, which operated from a, a Mayfair manor house or mansion block. And they built up a sizable, uh, for want of a better word, cult, a very idiosyncratic cult which believed uh, that they could... It, it was quasi-religious in as much as they used Scientology, but they also, the leader, a guy called Robert de Grimstone, um, believed in this sort of alliance between uh, Christianity and Satanism, which uh, during the 1960s was probably quite appealing to a lot of people. This church branched out, not surprisingly, during 1967 with a quarter, a, a, a chapter, so to speak, in San Francisco at the same time that Charles Manson was living in San Francisco. And he became uh, an occasional visitor, let's say that much. But he, he, he squirreled away a lot of their um, magazines and... Uh, a lot of the technology of uh, the Process Church, uh, which was coined mostly by this chap called Robert de Grimstone, um, Manson incorporated into his sort of mind games and his, his mindset. And uh, a lot of that dripped into this, as we now know, the cult of the family. And um, so that was really interesting to see that all, a lot of... Manson's doublespeak and mad talk actually sort of had worked its way back to a uh, this strange sect which was based, uh, as I say, in Mayfair. Um, so that was that was the first point which really hooked me. I thought, well, that's extraordinary. Uh, the second uh, point which uh, blew me away that um, there was grave suspicions at the time of the uh, arrest of the Manson family in December '69 that the Manson family had actually murdered someone in London, in a hotel in Hammersmith. Now, as a, a researcher and as someone who obviously is based in the UK writing a book on an American phenomena, this was extraordinary. Mm -hmm. And it, I really had to get to the bottom of this one. So, um, there began an odyssey, a, uh, an extraordinary odyssey into determining exactly what happened. And I feel I cracked it, I feel I, I got to the bottom of it. And it, it's not as it seems, as is a lot of the uh, Manson family uh, myth, and I stress that, it's a lot of... Um, I think myth-making is very much a part of the 60s, and Manson is no exception to that. So, to answer your question, yes, um, there were some very strong connections with Manson and London, remarkable as it is. Can you just briefly talk about Charles Manson, just for the people who are not particularly familiar with him? Yeah, and it's an interesting point. Charles Manson, uh, it was 40 years ago, the mm. Tate LaBianca murders, and um, Manson was a, uh, a mediocre busker. He was a career criminal who was released in March 1967 and gravitated towards Haight-Ashbury, where, uh, as a 34-year-old man, he was a little older than the flower children there, but he had a charisma. 
And he, for a five foot two little guy, he, it, it was quite extraordinary. He, young people especially, like liked him. They they felt that he had this kudos of coming out of jail. He was a musician. He also was really interested in mind control and philosophies. I mean, as were a lot of people in the 1960s. So he had an enticing package. He collected a gaggle of young followers who were loosely called the family. They jumped on a school bus, they, uh, a converted school bus, I should say, and they headed off down into Los Angeles. The brief was that Manson was going to be a huge recording star. And I think if one looks on YouTube and various places, you can see early examples of Manson's music. There in Los Angeles, um, for a while they lived at the um, drummer of the Beach Boys house, uh, Dennis Wilson, and then they got kicked out of there and they ended up on a movie ranch on the fringes of Los Angeles called Spahn's Ranch. And it was all really geared, I mean, from my researches for the book, it was all really geared towards Manson Musician. This was the idea, he was going to be a famous musician. That dream collapsed spectacularly in the summer of 1969, where basically he managed to alienate uh, the music industry they were they were terrified by this guy because he was so wacky he was so offbeat he was so and he was starting to become very agitated at the fact that his recording dreams were not uh, being realized after a sequence of events um manson green lighted a killing spree uh in hollywood over the weekend of august 8th and 9th 1969 where actress sharon tate and uh, her friends at a house in Beverly Hills were slaughtered and butchered. There's no other word for it. Uh, the following night, a supermarket manager and his wife in the Los Feliz area of um, Los Angeles were also butchered to death. These were by Manson's acolytes who did this. Manson didn't take part in this. He was sitting back at the ranch. The linchpin of this case was the fact that actress Sharon Tate, wife of Roman Polanski, A-list Hollywood celebrity, was included in the murder toll. I strongly believe that it's because of the Hollywood connection that this 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 case generated so much publicity. Mm. And so it, it, the story has got as much to do with celebrity as it has to do with anything. with another one another podcast this is a dope one too this is a podcast about comic book animations or some shit like that i guess it's pretty important these days in the snatter cup movement i don't know i guess we're gonna talk about it i, I guess i don't know but um i know y'all saw that intro that shit was you know more of my normal type of go deep shit but every now and then i do interview people from the movement also so that the interview probably doesn't have shit to do with the intro but fuck it i'm putting this out today so i already got an intro made so might as well use that shit too ha <laughs> so go deep episode 238 i ain't gonna talk much we're gonna get into some music and then right after the music we're gonna get right into the interview and then probably after this, 239, we'll get back on our shit. But 238, we're going to take a little pit stop and we're going to interview my dog, Mighty Pegasus. We're going to talk about comic animation shit, I guess. <laughs> you bitch. Everybody. 
If you know, then you know. Can't believe all that you're told. All that glitters and gold. I ain't selling my soul. All of these sellouts and cop they're making me hop out to get them exposed. Bunch of Pinocchios growing their nose. Always be saying the most. Try to be lying, not claiming the diamonds when really they cold. What pressure they fold, they do what they told. Cheap to the slaughter, what shit to a gold. The shepherd and herder is on top of both. Though no one come close to the host of a home. But what if you can't be more than a man in America? An idol that's rushing by fans You might have a chance to socially advance Ascension to heaven, look down on the land Knows that it's now or never Everybody knows that it's me or you And everybody knows that you live forever When you've drawn a line or two Difference with politicians and all of the rhetoric Donkey your elephant to tell the truth that be hesitant Like me to you with subliminal messages To how it really goes down And how it went down to the way they be telling it Focus on things that's irrelevant Showing no reverence What came before at the top of the precipice Being more negligent to corporations that benefit off of our deficits We kill the profits of medicine While the ones at the bottom get shitted on and written off at the end of it Up our religious zealots versus cynical heretics Radical terrorists Racist confederates Criminal elements All taking life for the hell of it Lacking the love and respect for it Yeah, yeah, I can hear. Okay. Give me one second. It's weird. I, uh... Yeah, I, no, you turned it off. Turn it back on. Yeah, yeah. Let me see. Yeah, I can hear you, but you're, you turn your headphones off. Okay, let's try again. Try again. Yep, it's, it's good. It's good. Oh, this is weird. Uh, let me check my audio really quick. Yeah, I can hear you on your... It sounds like I can hear you on your computer more than I can hear you on your headphones. We'll just... <laughs> no, no, put them back in, just click it. Put them back in and you can, it'll, it'll take over. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Plug it back in. Yeah. I hear you without it, but let's see. Yeah, plug them in and it'll take over everything. Oh yeah, you're right. All right, perfect. <laughs> All right. So, what's going on, homie? Ah, not much. How are you doing? Good, man. I got the fucking man, the myth, the legend in this bitch. I got oh, wait, mighty uh, Pegasus. I'm so what? sorry. He went back again. I don't know why he's doing this. You know, I'm well, just gonna do it without it. All right, fuck it. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, it, it's fine like this. Yeah, I can still hear you. All right, perfect. Hopefully, your voice uh, won't echo at the same time. Yeah, it's all good. Got Mighty Pegasus in this bitch. Go Deep episode 238. What's going on, Mighty P? Uh, nothing much. You know, I uh, just, just got back from work, like I said, and uh, like I was messaging you, and that's it. Just ready for, uh, for Monday. Yeah, hell yeah. yeah. So it's been a long time coming, bro. I've been, yes. I've been trying to get you on this podcast for a little while, and, you know, um, when I put it out now, it's probably going to look like... Um, you see all this animation shit going on in the in the movement. They're probably going to be like, yo, why did he put him out now? But no, we've been trying to get Mighty Pegasus on the show. So yes. we're, we're not trolling anybody. But Pegasus, <laughs> let's take it to <laughs> let's take it from the beginner. You know, where are you from? Uh, tell us about how you get into the movement with Zack Snyder, you know, uh, release the Snyder Cup movement and all that. Right, yeah. Um, right from the start. So, well, uh, it started around... Uh, well, you know, I, I've been a big fan of Zach, you know, since Dawn of the Dead, you know. Oh, yeah. So I've always loved his movies, you know. And uh, it's funny because at the time, I, uh, uh, he, I didn't even know who he was. I just loved Dawn of the Dead, you know. And uh, his name didn't really pop, you know. And then I didn't stop paying attention until I think uh, uh, it was Watchmen because Watchmen to me really stood out. And I was like, you know. Uh, you know, they, I remember back then they had a, a trailer and they had visionary uh, director Zack Snyder. And I'm like, oh, you know, interesting, you know. And then uh, 300 came out after that, if I was right, right? 300 came out afterwards. And uh, and then it was like, that was the start of like, you know, of, uh, uh, you know, you know, me just being a big fan of Zack Snyder, you know. And, uh, you know, flash forward, you know, later on, you know, uh, 2017, I, uh, I uh, had just... Um, uh, separated from the military for a year and uh, 
I was, you know, I was trying to, I was trying to find, uh, I was trying to figure out my, my life, basically, you know, what I wanted to do, uh, I thought, you know, what I wanted to do in my life, and I wanted to get back into art, and uh, art was something I used to do when I was a kid, you know, and uh, and I kind of stopped for the longest, you know, and and uh, one thing I really love that uh, Zach does is, uh, uh, it's just the visual, you know, that, that he does, you know, the uh, how he he chooses to do his visual, you know, is very, uh, very beautiful. And uh, so anyway, so in 2017 they had a they had a, a competition for the uh, Justice League uh, a movie, you know, for the theatrical release. And uh, at the time I was preparing to to start, you know, my uh, my journey as an artist. And I told myself, you know, hey, wh what's uh, what's a what would be the best way for me to break through the whole, you know. Uh, uh, artists you know fear of like you know sharing my my art or just you know just put myself out there right so you know why not just try out this contest and uh see what happened and that's what i did you know and uh, after that I've, ever since then you know i just I just kept on going you know so uh that's pretty much the start of me uh uh getting into the uh well not really in the movement because after the movie came out obviously we were all disappointed and uh <laughs> You know, it took me a while to actually figure out uh, to uh, get in the movement because, you know, I think a lot of us were kind of like lost and didn't know if it was really going to happen, you know. Mm -hmm. So we will see things on so social media, you know, and uh, uh, that's kind of where I was. You know, I was kind of like seeing things on Twitter uh, and uh, here and there. And, uh, you know, I just saw a lot of fans. And to me at that time, it was just a lot of fans just, you know, trying to push for, uh, uh, you know, just voicing their opinion. That's it. I, I, it didn't really was it wasn't really big on the release of Snyder Cut, you know, uh, hashtag yet. So, but I still I, I remember I still uh, I still shared it, you know, because I really wanted to see it. So that's kind of I guess that's, that would be the start, you know. That's when right. kind of story. Okay. You know. All right, words. So you say yeah. you were you were in the military. I see you were in the yeah. U.S. Navy, huh? Yes, correct. Uh, yes. Yeah. How did that How did that go? How How was your career? How did you know? Tell me some. It was great. About that. Yeah, it was great. You know, like. Um, uh, I spent uh, five and a half year uh, in the uh, in the Navy. Um, uh, I love my time over there. You know, I, uh, uh, if at the time if I wasn't if I wasn't married at the time, I probably would have stayed longer. But it took a big toll on my uh, on my uh, family. So uh, you know, I had to to uh, I didn't want to sacrifice the time of my family anymore at the time. So I decided to you know it's time for me to get out and uh, get back to the civilian world. So that's the reason why I got out right. and. Uh, but yeah, you know, I um, uh, still I still have some of my brothers in the military, and uh, you know, I love my military brothers. You know, so right. yeah, right. that's what's up, man. That's what's <laughs> yeah. up, man. We appreciate your service, dog. You know Thank that. Thank you. All right, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we're so then, you know, I I, I finally met you with uh, Koji. He commissioned you to do a picture of us, right. and. Uh, I was like, yo, who the fuck is Mighty Pegasus? You know, why, why the hell am I so small on this picture? <laughs> <You know? laughs> That's right. I remember you saying that, you know. Uh, I, I, you know, it's funny. I think I told you, right? I, I did yeah. not mean to make you small. It's just yeah. uh, Koji sent me those those pictures I was like, okay well that's how it looks so i'm just gonna make it like like that you know <laughs> uh but i do need to make it uh to redo it make oh, it you know <laughs> no we, we got some other ideas for you we'll get into that later okay so, so um so fast forward you came and i, I remember you went to, on the set with zach snyder right correct yes right? Uh, let's talk about that yeah um well it was you know one of the best moments you know uh you know, opportunity moment in my life, you know, so far. And, uh, and it was crazy. You know, I always tell people it's crazy how it happened. Um, I didn't even think it was going to, like, it, it kind of happened. So I started my project a year before, uh, uh, well, seven months before the announcement of the, you know, the fan art poster. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was trying to have it done for the, uh, the anniversary of uh, the three-year anniversary of uh, the justice league release you know uh where we have this big event you know yeah. and uh and it didn't happen at the time i was so busy i had convention going on uh and work and everything so it didn't happen so and i almost give up you know the on the on the project too and uh so it you know um it was announced in 2020 february 2020 from february right mm -hmm. and uh and three months Prior to that, I uh, that's when I was telling myself, you know what, I'm never gonna finish it. 
Uh, so I kind of give up and my art tablet also died on me. So, you know, everything happened like as if it was never going to happen, you know. So I really kind of give up. And and uh, one of my good friends, you know, he he was like, you know what? No, you know, you spent so much time on it. I'm going to give you my, you know, my, my tablet, you know, for you to finish it. And the last three months is it was just crazy. I just, you know, I just kept drawing every day, you know, and uh, and uh, two days before uh, the announcement, that's when I finished uh, the uh, the project. And it was like uh, to me, it felt from my point of view, it felt like uh, it was like a like destiny. You know, it was like oh yeah, man, yeah. no yeah. way. You know, like they announced it. I have to, I have to submit it. You know, yeah. and uh, it was a crazy uh, feeling. You know. Um, it's so hard to explain. It was just amazing, you know. Right, right. And right. Uh, that's so, dope. yeah, yeah. That's dope, man. So, the, <laughs> from your point of view, you were drawing your ass away, and, and we we were fighting people on Twitter, you know, to to get the announcement, <laughs> <laughs> which is fucking crazy. Yeah, each of yeah, our yeah. perspectives. I remember around that time, and I remember seeing your picture, and I was like, "Yo, that's fucking that's crazy." I I couldn't believe somebody could draw that and make that much detail and that you know like who so who chose the winners again because we were so occupied yeah. i don't know who, who chose you, you know uh so from my understanding because uh uh there was a there's a page i was created on vero and twitter uh for the uh you know the the zack Snyder's fan poster that's why he was uh at you know as right. and uh so i think uh at the time i uh, from what i understood it was tpz um, and I didn't even know who TPZ was, you know. Um, I knew I was following one of the guy, and I didn't even know they were part of the TPZ. Right. And uh, so, but yeah, I think that's 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 who was running it with uh, uh, Zach. And um, when I got on set, uh, Debbie and Zach, uh, well, Debbie told me actually that they they were working with uh, that small group uh, to review all the art. And uh, so Zach and Debbie personally, you know, looked at every single, you know, entry, like the thousand plus art. Damn. So that's how, that's kind of how it happened, you know. Damn. So, Damn. yeah. So when you got on set, how was that like? What did you see? Or can you talk about anything? Yeah, right. absolutely. Yes, I can now. You know, it was, it was, uh, it, it is um, really quick. It was such a, such, it was so hard that one, uh, like six months. Uh, not being able to talk about it yeah <laughs> everybody was like no we we know you're in there you know we know you already left and i was i, I still i had to pretend i didn't go still you know i couldn't right. say anything right. so that was like a, that was very funny but crazy at the same time right. and uh but it was great you know the second i got on set um i was greeted by one of the uh um uh, assistant producer mm -hmm. and uh and they, they just you know of course they were like you know it, you can't talk about it you know this is what's going to happen they told me today we have Jared Leto coming uh and he's getting uh, his makeup done at the moment so uh you're going to get to meet him and uh, yeah. they told me unfortunately you know uh they were very you know honest or like you know unfortunately you won't be able to meet like uh, uh Ben Affleck or any of the other cast uh due to kind of you know the situation uh it was COVID situation and yeah, everything was kind of like hard you know so uh but yeah, that's pretty much what happened. But Jared Leto was there, and uh, I got to meet uh, Richard Satron, right. and uh, I think that was about it. That because um, the whole the whole day, uh, I was there for three days, but really they shot for one day while I was there, um, and um, and yeah, so I only met Richard Satron and Jared Leto, and they only shot that one scene with uh, uh, in the nightmare sequence, mm -hmm. and uh, like like a. In the movie, you see all of them together, but it was kind of like shot separately, and they just put it on together later on, you know. Mm -hmm. right. So, so the day I was on, you know, it was only these two, and it, right. it lasted all day. I think we finished like we started early at like uh, eight a.m. and we finished at uh, eleven p.m. You know, mm -hmm. so and and that to them was uh, what they call a half day. So. <laughs> Yeah, so that half day, you know, they told me, uh, Debbie was telling me that usually it will take way longer, like a full day of uh, shooting, you know, so right, I cannot right. do it. So right. it, was, it was a crazy experience. It was fun, you know. That's dope. That's yeah. dope. So yeah. I've, been on, I've been on a movie set. I was in The Patriot, the movie with Mel Gibson as a... Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, back in the day as an extra in Charleston. So when I got on that, I, I saw how movies were made, you know, and that kind of... Yeah that put me into the zone where I'm at right now, you know, just from that one movie, seeing behind the scenes and seeing how shit is set up and 
did that give you any different outlook, different perspective on movies or Zack Snyder or yeah. how his production might be? Yes, absolutely. You know, um, it's, you know, it gives me, it gave me so much more like a, uh, insight, you know, like of what people do, like so much more respect on everybody in there, you know, like they work so hard, uh, from, from the person just taking order to just help uh, get uh, the lunch for everyone to, you know, to the, uh, the microphone guy, you know, and all these guys, you know, like e everyone, they work so hard. They, they prep for the longest and then they shoot for a long time and then they clean up for a long time too, uh, just to wake up early and redo everything the next day. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, you know, it's, it gave me a very, um, a very different view on how on the behind the scene of movie making, you know, and it's incredible, you know? Right, yeah. Right. All right. Yeah. Dope. You're a cool dude, man. But yeah. so I'm going to have to ask you some uh, movement questions. Now we got all sure. your, your shit out. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we see there's this motion comic shit going on right now. And you saw that the, mm -hmm. um, you know, I guess they canceled it. And I, I, Matt from Lightcast, I'm not shitting on him. He's been on this show, and you know, I I would consider, I would say he's he's always been cool with me. So I haven't, you know, I haven't had any reason to shit on him. But what I'm saying is, you know, it's canceled now. The people kind of, I guess they got a a strike, a content strike with Warner Brothers, so they can't put it out. How do you maneuver through that, or could let's say? Could they have came to you and said, yo, we need you to draw some of this shit and, you know, make it go through, make it pass or what? Mm -hmm. um, I think they like they could have asked me. Um, I, I, I didn't get approached for that uh, as far as uh, uh, how everything kind of um, unravel, you know, and how the whole dilemma right now going on. Uh, I think it could have been. Um, could have been prevented you know um i i because i do understand how how people feel and it's very valid you know and uh so that makes sense because as an artist myself i see that all the time you know like uh sometimes i go to convention and some of these like uh con artists over there they, they do stuff that really like wow you know i can't believe they do that and nobody's like stopping them you know they literally just uh copy a picture and just and resell it and trying to make it their own, you know. And uh, right. so I understand from that point of view, you know, what people, why people uh, uh, were raging about. And uh, at the same time, I think uh, I think they could have went a different way. But uh, you know, it, I think it was all in the in the in the right place. They all wanted to do something, in the, you know, from the you know from the good. good heart. Yeah, right, you know. Right, right, and right, uh, right. I I just don't think uh, uh, the reception was what they expected. And uh, right. But I, I think I think they did the right thing too. You know, it's kind of it's kind of sad that they you know that they did the right thing by you know uh, withdrawing you know from the the thing you know from the the actual you know uh, motion comic, uh, which is kind of sad because I was actually excited and I didn't realize all these uh, you know uh, like uh, you know how the resemblance on all the art yeah. that, that that was from Jim Lee and all that. I honestly didn't realize until uh, they, you know they they uh, they were called out on that. Yeah. So uh you know it's it's very it's very hard. Um everybody has mixed feeling on that at the moment, but I think everyone is very valid, you know. Right. Uh, right. so yeah me personally I uh uh I know some of those guys, a couple of them. Uh not personally but just from interaction you know on social media and some of them are just you know great guy and uh, that's why i said like i know he came from the heart right. and uh right. i don't think they, they meant anything like that so right. uh okay. you know it's one of those unfortunate you know uh situation that you know it just it just happened the way it is right now yeah. right okay yeah so how do you maneuver through that because like you said the mm -hmm. remember the the jim lee pictures the similarities you know mm -hmm. Do you is that an executive decision beforehand where you say, nah, let's not do that. Let's not, mm. you know, go that route. How do you maneuver through this content shit with, without Warner Brothers hitting you for a strike like that? You know, it's kind of hard because uh, even for me, uh, when I create my, my own fan art, uh, no, no artist is uh, safe from a, from a strike from any, you know, studio, you know, uh, uh, like you know, you've seen situation before where, like for example, Marvel, Disney, you know, they, 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 they went hard on uh, this this uh, family because they they had like Spider Man uh, yeah, graveyard yeah. tomb, you know, yeah. and things like that, you know, and and they were not that wasn't even like a stray like you know copy of something. They just had a a, 
a representation of Spider-Man, you know. So for us right now, what's going on right now for uh, for people who uh, who don't follow artist community, what's going on right now in the artist community is uh, uh, th they are really cracking down on all the fan art stuff. For like, so like even like my my uh, right now I'm doing a, a Justice League uh, a card deck project, right? Mm -hmm. So just because I'm using their uh, IP, you know, character, uh, they can strike me, even though it's not an actual. Uh, like a copy of something that they already have but I create my own thing just because i have their character their name you know uh, on it they can they, they can strike it you know and uh so the big company they're really cracking down on uh on the artists like that right now and a lot of people don't know that because you know they don't go into like the community like the convention and you know the artist community we all see that you know so it's kind of one of those subjects that's kind of like uh it's kind of so like at the convention for example um to make you kind of understand is like marvel if marvel or dc can be at a convention and see all this fan art but they won't do anything because it's free publicity for them right all right so they won't even care but then whenever it's convenient they'll, they can choose to like strike it you know mm -hmm. you know give you like hey you know a flag hey you know you can't do that you know things like that you know so it's kind of like this weird you know they they don't want to be black and white, but then they want to be in the middle, and then whenever they want it to be black and white, you know. Right. So it's kind of weird. So when it comes to like fan doing this kind of project, I feel like it's okay to do it, you know, because you know I started I started uh, that's how I started too when I uh, uh, started my journey. Uh, there was a, this picture of uh, Vegeta uh, that I made. Is exact. I drew the exact, you know, uh, picture from that one scene, you know, imagine Vegeta when he dies, you know, and it's just an epic scene. The only difference is I did it in Chinese ink. So all the the effect was different, you know, like uh, the the lines and everything, you know, uh, the the texture uh, was all in Chinese ink. So so I could say I could have said that, you know, hey, you know, that's my version. I, I did it that way. But at the same time, it's the exact same, you know, representation. So it's one of these situations that, you know, as an artist, you have to be honest to yourself and be like, uh, yeah, you know, it is technically I shouldn't I shouldn't do that because, you know, it's wrong. Uh, but we're fans, you know, it's one of those things, you know, it's like, so I don't know if you know what I mean, you know. I get it, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's why it's such a I tough situation, you know, to, uh, to comment about because I don't think anybody has, you know, uh, bad intention, you know. So a lot of people do, but... I think for what uh, those guys were trying to do, I think it was for good intention, you know. Right. Okay. So you say sometimes they will let it pass and sometimes they're going to mm -hmm. strike it and it just depends on what they feel. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I have, uh, I have a couple of friends of mine that are, uh, uh, that have, that used to work for DC and Marvel. Uh, and, uh, and I remember when I first met them, they told me, yeah, you know, uh, sometime the, the most they'll do at first is they'll, they'll give you a warning. They want you to take it down not do it again. But the, the the thing they'll do again is like uh, vendors they'll they they'll redo it again they they wait the month whenever that's gone and they don't pay attention to them anymore they'll redo it and most of the time sometimes they they even forget like the big company they'll forget and won't even do anything so it's kind of weird you know so people take advantage of that which is you know that's why people say it's wrong you know right yeah so let me ask yeah. you this if they were to commission you to mm -hmm. do something like that could you navigate through it would you know what to do and what not to do yeah, I will actually. So, um, what I would have done is, uh, uh, I would try to take like the same like kind of posture, but change everything, like style and everything. Don't, don't, don't want, don't trace over it. Uh, if you have your own style, incorporate your style into it. Like, uh, I, you, I don't know if you saw my, um, uh, my, uh, Lucario family doing the Kamehameha one, you know? Mm, no, I haven't. I no? gotta check it so, out. So it was inspired by uh, the uh, you know the uh, um, Dragon Ball Z Broly two movie where they you know they do the Kamehameha together mm -hmm. uh, with father and sons and uh, so I did I did the same thing but with Lucario so you know that uh, by looking at that picture that is it's reference to that scene but none of it is 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 the same because you know it's Pokemon you know right. it's Pokemon doing it you know things like that uh, so things like that you can do because you know it's a uh, you incorporate your own, you know, style in it, you know, yeah. your own, you know, something else in it. Uh, if I were just to just trace over it, then, then that's when it's a problem. I had a situation like that where uh, uh, an artist, uh, you know, a, a fan artist, you know, who who's, who uh, started drawing also, he wanted to use uh, uh, one of my art as a reference and it uh, turned out that he actually just traced over it. And I told him, you know, uh, yeah, you should try to just change things, you know, 
just so that people because uh if you have a fan base they're recognized like my fan base if they see that art they're recognized hey you know that's not you 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 trace over this guy you know you know what i mean so it comes down to the same thing at the bottom so that's what i would do you know use if you want to use the same pose you use the same pose but do 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 it your way do it your right. style right. yeah right I get it. I get it. So I'm asking you all these questions because mm -hmm. maybe the Watchman's going to want to commission you pretty soon to do something okay. like that for us. All right. Okay, all yeah. Right. So we'll talk. Okay. After, we'll talk after the show about pricing and all that. And, you Absolutely. Know, yes. Hey, <laughs> feel feel free to hit us over the head because yes. Hamad is a Watchman and Hamad has a lot of money. So <laughs> <laughs> that's good. No, Hamad is a great guy. Yeah. is a great guy. He was one of the first one who uh, bought my uh, my poster, and I remember, and that to me that that meant a lot. So All right. yeah, word, word, that's what's up. So yeah. I'm thinking of something we can do, but I want to do, and I'm going to say this publicly. So if anyone does it, they know they stole it from us. Yeah. I want to do like a comic about the movement, but in some like science fiction way. But I want mm. it to be like look through. Fiona's lens like you know how uh, mm -hmm. Ben Affleck came and got everybody together uh, Batman got the whole Justice League together I yes want, I want Fiona to do that but we got to uh, come up with a bunch of different characters and yes you know shit like that and but what I want to do is I want to bring you into the Watchmen chat because mm -hmm. everyone that we kind of talk to or we discuss anything with they're all in that chat and you know it'll mm -hmm. probably be a lot easier for Maybe I bring you in one day and we can um, discuss branching off into another chat where we can discuss this comic. All right. Yeah, absolutely. I would love to. Yeah. Word, word, word. <laughs> yeah. But before, all right, before I let you go, you got to tell me about your name, Mighty Pegasus. How did you get your name? And oh, yeah. Uh, story that's very that. simple. You know, uh, Mighty because, you know, I like all kind of don't like things, you know, and the only thing that that strike my mind at the time that will, uh, Oh, <laughs> my speaker. I don't know what the hell that shit was. Oh, it's all good. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Like I was saying, you know, I like any kind of like, you know, powerful godly type stuff. So mighty to me strike as like, you know, the mighty gods, you know, I was like, okay, I need, I want to use mighty in my name. And then Pegasus, because I'm a big fan of, uh, you know, the uh, anime called Sensei. Mm -hmm. And uh, the main guy is, is a Pegasus uh, a knight. And so, you know, I just figure mighty Pegasus and art. That's it. That's dope, man. That's yeah, yeah. dope. All right, word. So <laughs> I, I also want to ask you because I see you must be lifting weights or something, but you're a fucking diesel <laughs> little dude. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so I'm you, very sure. You know, I'm not that big. I'm a, I'm a small guy. You know, I'm only five, five, six, five, five, and uh, I'm not a big guy, man. It's uh, I look like it, but I'm not. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. I try yeah, to stay right, healthy. Right. I try. Yeah. <laughs> That's the guys that be humble but still kick your ass. I know you guys. <laughs> All right, Mighty Pegasus, man. Yeah. I appreciate the interview, man. I appreciate yeah. the time. You know, this was yeah. a great interview. You hit every subject perfectly. And like I said, I want to, I got to run to go get some new tires in a second, but I'm going to edit this oh, shit man. up. But yeah. I also want to bring you into the Watchman chat so you could, we can kind of discuss yeah. some, some shit further yeah please let me know when and um uh, uh really quick i just want to thank you like you said uh we've been trying to set this up for a while and i i really appreciate you know your flexibility uh it's been so hard and uh so yeah you know i really appreciate that so it's my pleasure you know i actually i was i was going to ask you i know you got to go but uh, i guess we'll get to ask you next yeah. time you know no, no, I, I didn't know your, well i didn't know your whole story because um i remember i watching you uh I, I can't remember when exactly I found out about you because I remember uh, watching you before I met Koji. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I, I was going to return the question to you: When did you get into the movement? You know, because that's something oh, I don't. Think yeah. I yeah. Oh man, this it was. Um, it came with my kids, bro. My kids did a <laughs> podcast. Like um, I don't know. I was kind of. I was watching the movement from the outside. Like I would watch like Chris Wong. Wong like totally random videos or uh, film gob, Dave the Film Junkie, shit like that. And my kids would watch them too. So they were they were watching them first, actually. They were all just sit around the apartment and I hear it in the passing. So I was always like, um, like critiquing these guys' videos while I'm listening to them. So my kids were like, dad, you know, blah, blah, blah. So they wanted to do it. So we, we kind of produced a little show for them and it was good. So Fiona, Fiona shared it and she shared it with Zach. And then Fiona 
text me somehow on uh, Vero. And she was like, yo, yo, Zach loves this, blah, blah, blah. And it, we just kept doing them over and over. But then when the kids got back in school, I think this was like 2017, we couldn't really do much podcast with them because Kimora goes to one school and the boys go to one school. So it was hard to get them together. But I started doing, I, I already did a podcast. So I just switched my shit over to help this movement a little bit. So basically what I started doing 2017, 18, 19, is I just started interviewing everyone in the movement. Like with you, everybody that I saw doing anything or making a movement, I mean, making a mark in the movement, I would reach out to them and try to interview them. Mm. And um, I just wanted to really get their stories about, you know, who are you and why did you like Zack Snyder and why did you get into the movement? And basically that just became this ongoing little cycle of three years interviewing people so um we got them we started just going wild on twitter um i got a little crew together we had a little crew called the 214 chat where it was the watchman and tpz we were all together vinaldo the account everyone was together in this one chat that i started and that's kind of what gave me life on twitter but i was doing these shit on youtube for about three years already from 17, 18, and 19. But on Twitter, when we got a little crew, and then that crew split up and became the Watchmen. And that's what mm-hmm. the Watchmen is right now. So my my part on the movement from not only making YouTube videos and shit like that, trying to interview people, I wanted to kind of get a crew together so we can dominate Twitter and kill those blue checks or whatever, whatever. And that's that's all I did pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Know? Oh wow, that's that's fantastic. Well, now I know. All right. This is great. (laughs) That's that's what I did. But Fiona grabbed us. Fiona Mm -hmm. got me in the movement from a video that she saw my kids do. She didn't see anything from me. She saw my kids. And that's how me and Fiona got introduced. Uh, That's so nice. She's great. She's also. Fiona is a queen. Definitely. Definitely. uh, All right, man. Well, I appreciate this interview. Yes. (laughs) Thank you again. And uh, you have a good one. All right. Yes, sir. I'm going to try to put this out today. You know, the timeline okay. is going crazy, so it might yes. go hot. <laughs> All right. I can't wait to watch it later again then. <laughs> yes, sir. Appreciate it. All right. Peace. You take it easy, sir. You Bye. Too.